Hey everybody, it's Tracking Pat. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the two-op portable CNC machine. What it is and what it isn't. What it is is a portable three-axis machine that is small in stature and designed to be moved around the shop to make the most out of your labor. What I mean by that is it's four feet by 30 inches wide and you can move it with a pallet jack. The control itself is what we call the track TMX control, and it's a specially designed control for this product. But it is a hybrid, and what I mean by that is there's three different ways to use it. The first one is the normal stature, which does all kinds of holes, bolt hole patterns, hole lines, things like that, drilling, tapping, you name it. It also can do circle squares and rectangles, whether they're frames or pockets. Uh, you can cut any kind of a line or any portion of an arc, and you can do rotates or you can do uh, repeats within the program. If I need to do something that's more complicated than that, I will usually go to one of our other programming sources, such as our advanced features that are in our SX control. And with that, I'll have more events in there. And when I make that program and download it into here, I'll still be able to work through that program, run it, and edit it. The third way would be to use G-Code. So if I'm using my CAD CAM system or any other source to get my G-Code program, it will run that and just become a slave to the G-Code, just like any other CNC would do. But the advantage here is in the structure and the size of it, right? So I'm gonna walk you through the control a little bit so you have a little better idea. You'll notice that if you've run any other ProTrack before, all the buttons will already make sense to you. DRO is your digital readout mode as always. It's where I set my zeros and it's where I move it around manually, okay? In the program and edit button, they are combined, which means I can make the program in there and edit any changes that I wanna have. In the setup mode, I describe the tool offsets, check the tool path, and load my tools in and out of the tool changer. The run mode makes the part, and like in all prototracks, your job in the run mode is to push go, and it does the rest. Program in and out is the storage or the memory of the control, so I can put programs in and out of the control by either using a USB stick or by using the networking. And I also wanna mention that the control has the ability to save a temp file. What that means is if I'm running a job all day long and Friday comes along, I can save temp, shut down the machine, and on Monday morning, open temp, push go, and be making parts again, okay? Um, so let's walk through a little bit of this and show you how it works. So first of all, I'm gonna go to DRO mode, and you'll see in here that you got your three axes, and it's showing you how to return to zero and your reference points and some of that stuff, okay? To use it, down in the right corner, I would select the resolution I wanted to move at, select which axis I wanna move, and then you'll see that as I move the dial, it's moving accordingly. If I wanna move slower, I just select a lower resolution and I'll have more leeway that way. And if I wanna change axes, then I just push that button. To set zero, all I have to do is shut the resolution off, select which axis I wanna set, hit the absolute key the same way as every other ProtoTrack works. For now, I have a program in here and I have my zero set, so I don't wanna change that, all right? So I'm gonna hit the mode key. I'm gonna talk a little bit about programming. Okay, so in here on the first page, I have my program part number. I have a place to put a reference from home in case I'm running this part at a later date and I wanna save myself some time and setup. And the last one says indexer. We'll talk about that at a later time, but it does have the capability to work with a programmable indexer. So I'm gonna to move to the beginning of my program. And in here, you'll see that I've got a standard program you're used to looking at, right? But with the dial, I can walk through here and each click forward moves from one question to the next so that I can make any changes. If I dial quickly, it'll go from one event to the next. And if I wanna go back one page, once I get to the top, one click moves it back a page at a time. So that's how I program and how I edit, all right? If I hit the mode key here and I go into setup mode, then the setup mode is where I'm gonna describe everything about my tool table. The machine has an eight position tool changer and if I have to run some odd tools that maybe don't fit in the tool changer, I can also call up a tool number nine and automatically put it in and out when it tells me to, okay? So I'm gonna show you a little bit about how some of the parts are on the inside of this, some of the features, and then I'm gonna show you how it works, okay? So let's do that right now. Okay, so here I am with the door open, right? Now you get a better visual of what's inside. So there's three different fixture plates that we make for the two-op, but before I get into that, I wanna explain that if I took all of this off of here, you have T-slots in the table just like anything else. So if you have a special job you wanna clamp down the way you normally would, you can do that. 
With the fixture plates, what we do is we use the Juergens ball lock system. And that allows me to take this fixture off and put it back on and have it be virtually in the exact same spot every time. This is the vice fixture plate. And with the vice fixture plate, it comes with a few uh, options on it, right? So it is keyed to hold the vice in the exact same place all the time. It has the fence, which is a metal fence that's magnetic, obviously. And then you have magnetic uh, stops in here. So you'll notice in here, I can put a stop in here. And then when I'm done with it, I can just pull it out of here and get it out of the way. All right. So that means if I'm making multiple parts, I put the stop in, slide my part over, lock the vise, take the stop out, and I can machine all the way around it. And each part's going to be the same place every time I make one. Okay. The stops come in three different lengths, and you can also make your own if you need to have something special. And then uh, if I take this fixture plate out, I have a standard fixture plate that I can build any kind of tooling for it and then switch that in and out whenever I need to. And the third one is a, is a fixture plate that's designed to hold the programmable indexer. Okay, and I'll get to that a little later, like I said, but just keep in mind you have those three options, all right? So what I'm going to show you here now is how the machine actually works, right? So I'm going to go to the run mode, and I've got a program in here already, and so like normal, I can start at the beginning, I can start anywhere in the middle. For now, I'm just going to go to the beginning, and I'm going to talk about one of my favorite subjects, right? We're going to talk about the fact that you can push, go, and hope, or you can use the tracking feature. Like most of our controls, I'm going to use the tracking feature, right? So when I come into here, I'm going to set my resolution for how fast I want a machine. And then as I turn the dial, it's going to make the part according to what I programmed. And I'm going to hope like heck that I did it right. So as I'm dialing through here, you'll notice it isn't moving very fast. So I'm going to stop and I'm going to go to a higher resolution and get there a little quicker. Okay? So I'm going to bring it down here like I normally would and probably stop just above the part like so. I'm going to make sure that this number up here looks like the number down there. And now I'm going to slow down my resolution so that I can actually cut with it. By now you should know that the way tracking works is if I stop, it stops. If I don't like where it's going, I go backwards, it'll go backwards. But otherwise I can actually machine with tracking. So I can dial this thing in the beginning of where it's going to start doing its machining and make sure it's in the right place. And once I know it's doing what I want it to do, then I can let it go. Now obviously I've already cut the part to make it easier for the filming. But I can see that everything looks right, so I'm just going to hit stop. I'm going to go to CNC run, and I'm going to push go and let it machine, okay? If at any time I don't like it, I can push stop and go back to tracking, okay? But what you're going to see in here is that it's going to machine the whole part according to where I want to be, and if any time I don't like it, push stop, I have the ability to go back to tracking, okay? The next thing I want to explain to you is how the tool changer works, and because this program has a lot of milling in the front part of it, I'm going to skip a little bit farther forward so you can see how that works, okay? So I'm going to get out of the run mode, I'm going to go back, and I'm going to start on event 53, which is the last thing it does with tool number one, okay? And so here I'm going to hit the absolute key, and it says when I'm ready, push go. So you'll see that it's going to go home, and it's going to come down to that position, it's going to tool change. And there you have it. So that should give you an idea how easy it works. It uses the X, Y, and Z axes both to do the machining and to do the tool changing so there's less moving parts and it also helps to keep it compact. Now let's talk a little bit about what the 2-op isn't. As I discussed before, the TMX is just one of the many Prototrack controls we make. We always try to apply the right amount of simplicity and technology to everything that we have so that it fits the job that you're doing. This is not just a generic control that we put on every machine we make. Just like the 2-op is not a scaled down version of a bigger model that we make. It's specifically designed to move around and use it to the best of your ability to get the most out of your labor. And I hope if you see it from that view, you'll realize that this is something that can help you a lot. Okay, there's a brief description on the track 2-op and some of its uses. Our next videos are going to show you some scenarios on how to make piece parts and make money with it, and also how the indexer works on the control. Thank you again for watching. See you in the next video.